Have you found aphids in your garden and you have scrambled to figure out what to do? If so, I would love to encourage you to do this. Absolutely nothing. I know that's a bold claim on my part, but I would love to share with you what my experience has been when it comes to aphids in my organic garden. Just a quick backstory, I started my first garden seven years ago, so I'm on my eighth season. I didn't actually start organic, but I quickly switched to organic. And in any of those years, I've never had to do anything with the aphids in my garden. I haven't had to spray, I haven't had to do anything. And I know that aphid infestations can get a little bit worrisome and they can kill a plant, so I've heard if they are left unchecked and if their numbers go too high. But that has not been my experience. I will say that this year I did get a little bit nervous because in this planting here behind me, I have nine Roma tomato plants. I found myself looking at probably the worst aphid infestation I had ever seen on any of my crops and they were covering my plants and I was, I was nervous, but I decided I was just going to wait. Number one, I knew that my plants were healthy. You can see behind me, they are growing fabulously, but I felt like they were strong enough to be able to survive the onslaught. I did look at them every single day just to see, make sure they were still okay. And every day I came out, they still seemed to be doing okay. Probably up to a week later, I didn't precisely count it, but it was several days. I started to see signs of beneficial insects that I knew were hunting for aphids. The three that are the most common and are the ones that I've seen in my garden are ladybugs, surfid flies, and lacewings. I definitely see ladybugs and surfid flies, also known as hoverflies, a lot more frequently. And I did find them in this area of my tomatoes and in my whole garden, in fact. So here's the thing about ladybugs, surfid flies, and lacewings. The adult is going to try to lay her eggs where her babies are going to be able to have enough food. And so that's one reason why I didn't want to spray the aphids because I knew if I want to have a diverse beneficial insect population, then those beneficial insects need to have some food to eat. At least they need to have food for their babies. So I wanted to leave the aphids there so that way my beneficials could have what they needed to continue to procreate and make their homes in my garden. So that's one reason I didn't spray. The other reason I didn't spray is because even though some of the organic sprays like insecticidal soap or neem oil will probably not harm the ladybug itself, it can and probably will kill her larva. And it's her larva that actually are the ones that eat so many aphids. I think lace wings, they're called aphid lions because they can eat hundreds of aphids and one surfid fly larva supposedly can eat like a hundred aphids a week but they are soft bodied just like aphids are and so whatever you spray to kill the aphids if you've got any of those larvae present they're gonna die too and so I didn't want to take a chance of killing any of those beneficial insects in my garden the thing that I have noticed year after year is that there is a period where that aphid population builds up to concerning levels, alarming levels, so to speak. But it's those levels that I believe is what's calling out to the ladybugs and they're able to find that food source for their babies. Ladybugs, surf flies, lacewings, all of them. And that's what I started noticing. I started noticing adult ladybug after adult ladybug all around my tomato plants. I started seeing surfid flies everywhere in my garden. And then I started to notice first surfid fly larvae. I started to see them on the leaves themselves. And then finally, I started to see ladybug larvae. And I actually got the chance to be able to watch a ladybug larva feast on an aphid. That was the coolest thing. And I can tell you that after a few days, after I first saw the ladybugs and surfid flies show up, 
the aphid population was dramatically reduced. It wasn't even an issue. And so I for sure have learned my lesson. And I know that there's probably exceptions to this, but every single year in my garden, I have watched this happen. The last two years, I have watched it very, very closely because I want to make sure I can do whatever I can to encourage a beneficial insect population in my garden as much as possible. Now, there are some pests that I do end up spraying in some kind of organic way or doing something else, but I have found that aphids, for me, they're not one of them. They're the ones that are considered the salad bar of the insect world. They have so many predators that I just leave them and consider them food for the beneficial insects that I want in my garden. A lot of people ask me, what can I plant in my garden to attract ladybugs? Well, I can tell you that I've seen ladybugs on my carrots. I've seen them on any kind of flowers that have like really small flowers, like, like carrots that are bolting or cilantro. I've seen them on all sorts of things, but I've never seen a more robust ladybug population in my garden than when there's aphids present. So if you want to attract ladybugs to your garden and surfing flies and other beneficials, number one, don't spray. Just hold off just a little bit longer give those good guys a chance to be able to get to your garden. And then number two, just watch and see. Give it a few days, and if the ladybugs and the serpent flies end up not showing up, then you might need to step in. And then if your garden is anything like mine, you might just have a front row seat to one of the coolest displays of nature that you have seen in your garden.